Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today I'm doing a review of the Scepter Nebula, a 27 inch gaming monitor. I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons and my real life experience that I've had with this monitor. And if at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I do got you guys, but let's jump into it. All right, so firstly, size and resolution. This is obviously a 27 inch 1440p VA panel gaming monitor. Okay, so the PPI or pixels per inch is pretty good at 109, about 109 pixels per inch. That means gaming is gonna be pretty clear, text is gonna be pretty clear. This is not like a 4K monitor. The PPI is about 163 with a 4K 27 inch, but games and text are definitely gonna be clear and it's gonna be easier to hit those higher frame rates in game because you're only doing 1440p. Most rigs today can hit 1440p with high frame rate, so that's great. All right, now there are a couple of really awesome big things with this monitor and the first one is the curve. Now, this this is not a typical 1500R curve than most 27 inch 16 by nine monitors have. No, this is a 1000R curve, so it is super curved. This is gonna be directly competing with the Samsung Odyssey G5, which also has a 1000R curve, but this monitor is way, is just a way better monitor. All right, now the other massive thing with this monitor, a huge pro that is way different than other monitors, is that this thing is super bright. This thing goes up to a peak brightness of 550 nits of brightness. That in itself is crazy, but that's just typical brightness. This thing will hit a peak brightness of 1000 nits. This is HDR 1000 certified. So yeah, this can genuinely do HDR and I've tried it, it works well, it looks pretty freaking awesome. To get legitimate HDR in a monitor this inexpensive is absolutely crazy. But yeah, if you're into HDR, this monitor can absolutely do it at a really affordable price tag. All right, now let's talk colors because that goes hand in hand with HDR. This has a pretty good color gamut. This hits 99% of the sRGB color gamut. Now, obviously we are not gonna be looking to do some photo editing or video editing. You can absolutely do it, but not professionally on this monitor. However, for games, it's gonna look pretty it's going to be vibrant, very nice. However, this can actually output 10 bits of color, which is absolutely what you need for true HDR. So it can do that. Now, I'm pretty sure it's not a natively 8, 10-bit panel, uh, but it may be. It can output 10 bits of color. I'm not exactly sure if it's natively a 10-bit panel or if it uses an 8-bit panel plus frame rate control to then output 10 bits of color, but nonetheless, it does output 10 bits of color, so your HDR is gonna look awesome. But overall, it is definitely a very vibrant panel, great for gaming and HDR content. I love it. Okay, contrast ratio. This hits 3,000 to one contrast ratio. Obviously, it's a VA panel. You're gonna get great contrast ratios. That's one of the biggest pros of having a VA panel, as well as that price. Now, that means your blacks are gonna be deep and black. So when you're driving at night, especially like night missions, driving at night in like Forza Horizon, that's where this thing just looks absolutely awesome. Couple that with the curve. I will say, as a sim racer, have my little rig back there. I can tell you right off the bat, getting a triple monitor set up with this monitor because it's so bright, so vibrant, and it's got that curve, that would be a pretty awesome sim racing setup. All right, now our fresh rate is keeping with the new industry standard of 165 hertz, so that's great. Obviously, you can do competitive gaming at that high refresh rate, and most of your systems should be able to hit, you know, 130 to 165 frames at 1440p. All right, but response time and ghosting. This has a one millisecond MPRT response time, so not gray to gray. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the gray to gray response time is. However, how does this equate to ghosting? This is the real life experience part. Now, I've tested it in all the different response time settings, and I found that on the highest setting, it kind of has some artifacting, some weird stuff going on. It's not necessarily inverse ghosting, not really exactly sure. I've never seen a monitor quite like that before that does this weird stuff. So if you're gonna set it, set it in medium. There's definitely ghosting, but it's not very much ghosting, especially for a VA panel, definitely among the better monitors for ghosting. Some of these VA panels have an insane amount of ghosting, but this one definitely is pretty manageable, not very much. So yeah, if you get this thing, make sure to set it in medium, not the highest setting. That's the best response time setting for you. Now, let's talk about the next thing. This thing has an ambient light sensor, which I find to just be like, uh, why, right? But I think the reason is because this is such a bright panel. Um, some of you may not want it always blinding you, especially at night. So that is kind of cool that they kind of integrated that. And I think it's definitely because of the super high brightness. So uh, typically for me, I like to just leave them always in the highest brightness. That's how I go. That's how I am. Just go big or go home. But a lot of you may have eye strain uh, with that high of brightness, although 
I don't know, I've never experienced that. But maybe if you're gaming at night, you don't want it at 550 nits or even more than that in HDR. But yeah, so it does have an ambient light sensor to adjust the screen's brightness depending on your room's brightness, which is kind of cool. All right, now the ports, this is where it gets kind of strange, but not in a bad way. Okay, so there's three HDMI 2.0 ports, not two, three. Uh, and then it has one display port, 1.4, a three and a half millimeter audio out, and then a USB type C that can do display 1440p at 60 Hertz and 1080p at 120 Hertz. And it provides 65 Watts of charging, but it's like, why? Uh, I mean, I get the charging, but like, Interesting. Um, I, you know, I, mean, I guess if you're gonna be switching from like a MacBook Pro or using this for an office monitor, that would be that would be great. You could have a MacBook Pro and your gaming system plugged in. Um, but yeah, very strange. So it definitely like I don't see any reason for like typical gamers to ever use the USB-C. But if you're gonna be using this as like an office-based monitor uh, and have like your PC hooked up to it, and then have like your XPS 13 or your XPS 15 or your MacBook Pro or your Razer Blade that you want to just like use for office work, you could definitely plug it in via USB-C and have charging to it, which is that's cool. I mean, it's there. All right, now the stand and build quality is awesome. It has swivel, it has height adjustability, and it has tilt. No rotation, but I don't mind that because this is a super curved monitor. So obviously I'd never want to do that anyway. Um, but the stand, really, really nice. Uh, it's all white. All the cables are white. It comes with a DisplayPort cable and that is all white. That's really cool. Now beyond that, it has cable management built into the stand, which works really, really well. Uh, now it does have fairly thick bezels for 2021. Um, however, not really that big of a deal. They kind of fade away in game and they're white. So it looks like kind of futuristic. However, one thing I don't like is that the white bezels on the sides don't completely cover the black bezel that's actually on the screen. So the screen has a slight black bezel that's around it and I don't really like that. Now again, you don't really see this when you're actually using the monitor at all. It just fades away. However, it's kind of annoying. All right, now the menu system, pretty much every Scepter monitor I get, this is like one of the cons of the monitor. They've all had like terrible controls and then one before this one had like better controls but it was still a little weird. This one goes exactly to what I wanted them to. I've been saying this for a long time, just do a joystick. They finally did it and it's pretty much perfect now. The actual menu system is not pretty, uh, but there's no learning curve now because of that easy joystick that's just super easy to use. It lights up red when it's not on, lights up blue when it is. You can turn that off if you want to. It's also got RGB on the back, forgot to mention that, but it's very, like you can't really see it. Uh, so I don't know, it's there if you guys like it. But the overall gaming experience, the immersion, the brightness, HDR, unbelievable for this price point. Having a 1000R curve that's not the Odyssey G5 and is super bright and super vibrant in game is absolutely awesome. Again, for this super insanely low price point. I absolutely love this monitor and if what you want is a beautiful display that is super immersive, this is absolutely the one for you. Again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, I do got you guys. But yeah, for like office use, you could definitely use this, but it's not like the best panel that you could get out there. It's also not the best like all around panel. Like there's definitely panels that are better. Um, however, for immersion, brightness, vibrancy, beautiful picture, high refresh rate, this thing definitely hits the mark. Now, again, this is a 1000 R curve. So like the big thing with this is immersion. Going through windows is gonna be a little bit weird and you're definitely gonna have to take some time to get used to it. Um, but in game, you don't need to. It's just amazing in game. So yeah, um, if you use this for schoolwork, uh, you could definitely use it. Like you can use any monitor for school or, or for work or for you know multitask or anything like that. Not a problem. But where this thing really shines is in game. So just take that into account if you guys get this monitor, but absolutely recommend it. Uh, Scepter just knocked it out of the park with this one. Very specific to the person that is gonna buy this. But if you are that person, what an awesome monitor. Yeah, this was Type C Tech Reviews. If you guys enjoyed this video, end it up to you. Help me out and throw a like below. And if you enjoy monitor reviews, gaming monitor reviews, or anything monitor related, I do that on this channel. So yeah, please consider subscribing below. This was Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.